Good afternoon, everyone. This video is brought to you by foodforliberty.com forward slash adapt2030. How prepared are you with long-term food storage as global agricultural commodities prices rise? Check the link below to see what else they offer. Looking for trends in cooling temperatures across the planet pinging on the mini ice age. Greenland ice sheet summit plunged to the record low July temperature 2016 breaking the 1992 record minus 30 Celsius in July and then 2017 breaking that record definitely a trend showing two years in a row this record 33 degrees Celsius below zero but I love how they just dismiss it it's a curiosity it's not worth much yet we know the forecast is going to be significant cooling dropping off rapidly Earth's temperatures are beginning to cool Greenland this is the year to date melt stories abounding last year about the aquifer lake draining in the area of Kulusuk and guess what the Icelandic pilots just spotted steam breakthroughs in the exact same glacial areas and while you're watching please remember to subscribe to adapt 2030 and click that bell to stay subscribed and get the latest updates We know through the latest research that we're going to be descending rapidly into something that would be around the spore or minimum type cooling. It's not going to be a gradual drop off either. We're going to slam straight down into this within the next seven years. So you would start to look for ramp up in activity that would go against the norm of global warming and actually show spots of cooling that stand out. One such place, Greenland ice sheet summit plunged to record cold July temperatures. Media says, so what? This is 2016. It was five degrees Fahrenheit, three Celsius cooler than the previous record set in 1992. But notice the way the article reads. I would believe it was a five degree new record. Let's dig further in. It was minus 30 Celsius. Now this is 2016. So a quick little jump onto a search engine. We start to see Greenland Ice Sheet Summit record low 2016. And then, whoa, whoa, wait, 2017 also. What's this new record there? Oh, 33 degrees Celsius below zero. Breaking that old record from last year by 3C. Same exact station, Summit Station. But then, of course, the media has a meltdown. They have to go into damage control right away because, well, it's the second year for record cold temperatures in July. And that temperature of 33 degrees Celsius set an all-time record for northern hemispheric low temperatures in July. Now, instead of saying, hey, that's unusual, right into it, Greenland's melting. Oh, well, it's over being overdone by the heat and there's some melting up in the Peterson Glacier, but don't worry about those new cold record temperatures. They're nothing significant, actually. And the old 2016 article talks about a blocking high pressure ridge system that's making these cool temperatures. And it's a one-off thing. But it's always interesting to contrast with the recent warmth record. And remember, all these new records being broken According to Jason Box, climate researcher with Geological Survey of Denmark says, eh, it's not worth much. But then the entire climate debate from the IPCC is based on the satellite record. Not worth much. You can see where they start counting 1989, but global temperatures are dropping based on all five satellite data sets, even though GISS, RSS, the NASA sets all run super hot comparatively to UAH. Now, up to date, July 29, 2017, accumulated surface mass. Wait a second, where's all the melting? Don't see much of that going on. And I know the detractors are going to come back and say, well, it says 200 gigatons are minusing per year. They finally updated their model. First, they talk about the update in 2014 for better meltwater refreezing in the snow, and then they updated it again in 2015. But you know what? I wish I would have grabbed the screen grab because a month and a half ago, they said the latest model was at 2012. So they've actually revamped this in a major way since the last six weeks. Also, they say it's been updated again in 2017 with a more advanced representation of percolation and refreezing of meltwater. 
but I love how they only use the extended reference period from 1981 to 2010. Why not add in these new record cold temperatures? We have data up to 2017. Why are they dismissing the last seven years of data? Well, let's see. It went up to record heat in 2012, but now it's cooling into 2016 and 17. I guess they don't want to see that kind of fluctuation in the record. They just want to show steady heating from 81 to 2010. After 2012, that whole steady heating model breaks and they don't include it in the record. And that is my own opinion of smoke and mirrors on the climate debate here. This is a purposeful manipulation to hide data that will skew the overall readings. Enough said with that. Record ice gain this year yet again across Greenland. All the way until the last week of July was record above gains on ice. Interesting with that. But wherever you look, our surface and satellite temperatures are showing a downtrend on this planet. Now that's all fine and interesting, but the most significant inconvenient truth in this whole video I'm putting together here talks about volcanism. Every grand solar minimum, there is an increase in volcanism. Sulfur dioxide and particulates are locked in ice, literally. These ice cores show when there's been major eruptions during grand solar minimums. Let's just use 1650, 1800. We know the volcanoes uptick and start during grand solar minimums. And here we are, an Icelandic pilot taking images from the aircraft of new breakthrough and steam vents out of the glacial areas in southeastern Greenland. Greenland, volcanoes awakening. This is in the area of Kulusuk. But lo and behold, scientists find giant cracks in the Greenland ice sheet that let these Arctic aquifer dams break and drain into the ocean. Where was that? Kulusuk. How inconvenient is this? We got volcanic breakthroughs. It's showing melting where the volcanoes are under the ice sheet, yet the IPCC is blaming it on global warming melting. That is absolutely stunning. I linked everything below. I hope you do your own research. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And if you like these types of reports I'm bringing you, please support me on Patreon. In the next video, I'm going to go more in depth into the volcanic breakthroughs on Greenland.